Squishmallow bee things. Okay, so I finally made a little bit of a better tutorial on the Squishmallow bags. I'm posting it in one minute segments because TikTok like just absolutely fucking when I do more than one minute at a time on these stupid videos. Um, I'm going to try and get them all posted between today and tomorrow because I'm still editing things. And once they're all up, I will like conglomerate them into one tutorial and just post it on my YouTube as well because it'll end up being between eight and ten minutes long. Specifically, it's just on how to do the bag part of the Squishmallows. I didn't really cover the strap part. I will cover that at a different time. Anyway, I hope this is helpful. Um, and I hope it doesn't flop because it took me for freaking ever to make. Okay, I love you. Bye. Hello, beadlings. Welcome back. This is a slightly more thorough squish bag tutorial in multiple parts. First things first, I open up the top seam using a stitch ripper. This is very tedious and you have to be careful not to rip holes in the actual Squishmallow fabric, which is very thin. You can see I just poked straight through it there. So you want to make sure you are just ripping the seam. Once you've got your seam fully ripped, take about half the stuffing out so that you've got room to work. Next step I do is pinning the zipper in place. So usually I make my zippers about nine inches long, 10 inches long, and you wanna get it real snug right up there on the end. And you wanna fold the fabric over so that you don't have a raw edge sticking out. Once you've got it positioned where you want it, start pinning it in place. Once you've got the entire front half pinned, you're gonna wanna cut off any extra zipper that you've got sticking out like that, leaving about maybe an inch, inch and a half left over. And you'll just tuck that right inside the bag. On to part two. Continuing from part one, you're gonna tuck that leftover zipper down into the bag and just make sure that all of your pins are where you want them on the front half of that zipper. And I like to fully sew down the front half of the zipper before pinning the second half. So that's exactly what we're gonna do, starting from the inside. And I don't remember the name of this stitch, but it's your real basic. You just go up and over and down and over and up, you know. You just wanna make sure at this part that you are um, going through both layers of the Squishmallow fabric because you've got it folded over on top there and that you've got your stitches a little ways away from the zipper itself so that the um, tongue of the zipper doesn't get stuck on any of your stitching. Once you reach the end, um, throw a couple stitches around the end of that zipper as like a little stopper because you cut off the end of it and so that the zipper doesn't go flying off the end when you unzip it the first time. On to part three. Continuing from part two, after sewing on a little stopper to the end of the zipper, we're going to pin the other side of the Squishmallow bag to that zipper. I do like to throw one or two little stitches right at the bottom there just to hold it in place. And then I'll just leave that thread dangling while I pin the rest of the back side to the zipper. As you can see, in order to get it pinned, you do have to unzip the zipper. So it's important you put that stopper on so that it doesn't become misaligned as you go on pinning. Squishmallow fabric is also very, very stretchy. So you do wanna pay attention and make sure that you've got your middle seam matching up both in the front and the back to make sure that you're pinning it evenly. I also like to test the zipper once it's all pinned just to make sure I don't have any fabric pinned in the way of the zipper itself and so that I can make any adjustments as needed if the zipper is uneven. Then just repeat what you did for the front side and sew the back side. On to part four. Continuing from part three, and we've just finished sewing the zipper to the Squishmallow, which means it is now time to sew the lining. And just as a side note on this, I don't own a sewing machine, so all of this is hand sewing. If you own a sewing machine, the way you do this is going to probably look a little bit different. For the lining, you're gonna take whatever material you want, you're gonna fold it in half, and then just check the sizing to make sure that it's actually going to fit inside the Squishmallow. If you have Taylor's chalk, you can draw out kind of an outline shape or you can just eyeball it, which is what I do, and cut the excess fabric, leaving maybe a quarter inch to a half inch of seam allowance around each side. You want it to be roughly the shape of a Squishmallow, so kind of oval or rounded. And if you just cut one side and then fold it in half and cut the other side, it comes out more even that way. Don't forget to fold your fabric the other way before sewing it together so that your nice pattern is on the inside of your bag. 
and this is optional, but I do like to iron out the creases as well. On to part five, continuing from part four, this is how I sew up my lining, and this is really the part where I wish I had a sewing machine, but with the pattern folded to the inside of your lining, you're going to just sew up the edges. Um, I like to use a running stitch, I think is what it's called for this, because it is uh, way faster than any other stitch I've tried to do. I'm showing what that stitch looks like on the screen, but I would suggest looking up a full tutorial just on different stitch types, because I am definitely by no means an expert on this one. However you sew it up, you're going to sew it about halfway to three quarters up the sides so that it basically meets together right where your zipper starts in your bag. Um, and it's totally okay to double check this using your bag for comparison to make sure you're sewing up to the correct point. This is approximately what it'll look like when it's done, and then you just want to make sure that you sew the other side up to match at the same point. Then I like to check it inside of the bag itself, so you got to sort of push around the stuffing to make room for the lining. Ugh, on to part six. Continuing from part five, so what stuffing is in the bag still, I like to sort of push around to make sort of a, like a divot in the center where the bag is gonna go, and also fill out the sides a little bit more so you can start to see the bag taking shape. Then I take the lining and I put it directly into the middle of that fluffed up bag and push it all the way down to the bottom to really see how it's going to sit when the bag is done and make sure that I've got the fit correct, um, both like in terms of the size of the lining and also in terms of where I have sewn up to on the sides. You want to make sure that you have fully sewed the edges together up to right where the zipper is or just below where the zipper is. And as you can see in this case, I did not sew it up quite high enough, so I'm going to need to take it back out and fix the edges. I did that part off camera, now it's back in the bag, and I'm going to fold over the edges so there's no raw edge, and pin it in place to the zipper. See you in the next part. Continuing on from part whatever, you're going to fold over the edges of your lining so that there's no raw edge, and pin it in place to the zipper. You want to make sure when you pin it, it goes through the lining, the zipper, and then also both layers of where you folded over the actual Squishmallow fabric um, so that you are really fully holding it in place. And you want to make sure, again, it is not too close to where the zipper is actually going to zip and unzip. You want to leave maybe a quarter inch, I think that is, of clearance. Um, and you'll see I, I test it constantly while I'm sewing too, just to make sure no fabric gets caught in the zipper. What I did in this case was I made sure that the front half was fully stuffed how I wanted it before pinning, and now I'm going to add some more fluff to the back half so that the bag sits how I want it, and then I will pin the back half of the fabric just like I did the front half. On to the next part. Okay, here is the next part. So once you've got that all pinned in place, you're going to sew it down. You can see the front half is actually a little deflated. So I'm gonna remove one or two pins and put some more stuffing in there as I go. Um, but this is how I sew it down. It's literally the exact same stitch that I used to sew the zipper on. Very tiny stitches uh, so that they don't get noticed. And it's very tedious, but you just gotta do it. I will take breaks every now and then to zip it up and unzip it and just make sure I don't have any fabric getting in the way of the zipper itself. And that's the bag part all done. Once you've got that all sewed up, you have a Squishmallow bag, or at least a Squishmallow container. And I'll be honest, I fully just had a fit of like productivity and made this whole strap without filming any of it so I will have to do a separate video on how I attach the straps but I literally just sew them directly into the bag anyway um I hope this was a helpful tutorial I'll put all this up on my YouTube as well bye